Hey guys, and welcome to another MLO Compositions tutorial. Now, this is number 25 in the first steps and preparation series. And today, of course, we're going to take a look at the next few nodes in the compositor. And that will be, let me just see, use nodes, at the vector nodes, okay? So we've got those four nodes. Um, I do not know, unfortunately, what the vector curves are for, um, at least not in the compositor. You can use them in the uh, material nodes quite easily, um, but I have no idea what they're good for in the um, compositor. I tried all kinds of setups, uh, but it never really gave me any kind of result. So yeah, um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the normal node. And we already did that in one of the last tutorials when we um, played with the monkeys. Um, but I forgot one thing and I want to cover that today. Let's just delete the default cube. Let's add a monkey. Let's rotate around the x-axis by minus 45 degrees. Uh, let's then add in a subdivision surface on level 2. Let's make that smooth. Let's go to the materials. Let's hit plus. Um, let's make sure we leave everything as it is or you can also play with that if you want. Doesn't really matter. And then we're just going to check mirror at 100%. Okay. And um, that's not what we want as the final result. However, we're then going to the render properties and under layers, we're going to check um, reflection as a separate pass. And then if we um, also click on this camera icon here, you can see it turns uh, gray or something. And that just ex excludes the reflection pass from the final combined pass. And then we can add that separately. Um, so yeah. Now let's just move in our camera, our camera a little bit. And one last thing, um, right now this is just this would just be reflecting a gray environment, which is not something we want. So instead we're going to turn the horizon color to black, but then we are going to use a sun lamp and we're going to set this to sky so it actually generates the sky. Um, but this is a bit too bright, I guess. Let me just turn that down a little because this is the brightness of the sun. Uh, let's just turn that down a little bit like this. Okay, now F12, and you can see this is what we get. And now if you go to the node editor, under compositor, use nodes and backdrop, shift A. Oh, also one thing, um, I already forgot to do that, but uh, I, I should really get used to checking this start display here on the screencast key so you guys can actually see what kind of buttons I'm using. You can see it down here. Um, unfortunately, it's not of much use in the um, node editor here. We do not have a screen, uh, a key display. What happens if I go to a 3db over here? Oh, here you can actually see it. That's nice. Uh, let's just see how that would be cool. Let's just do that like this. 3D view. Awesome. Now you can actually see No, you cannot see. Okay, unfortunately the, 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 the screen cast keys do not work um, in the compositor. Anyway, I'm sure you can still follow along. Shift A um, and then let's just add in a um, viewer node. Let's connect that to there. And this is our combined pass. And you can see our combined pass is not reflective. Now we have a separate reflect pass and you can see that's what the monkey reflects. And thanks to the sun lamp creating a sky, we now have this nice gradient from blue to something else than blue. Um, yeah. So with shift A, let's just add in a mix node. Oh, and one other thing, we also need to check a um, normal under the render, uh, on the render layer, so we actually get a normal pass. And now you have to recalculate that or re-render it. And now that's it. Okay, so now let's just um, drop the mix node into the uh, image um, thread or whatever, or noodle or whatever. And then let's just um, add the reflect pass onto that. Because if you remember correctly, um, that's how you apply the uh, reflection pass. And then let's just set that to something else than one, actually. Point three is about all right. So now we just have a slightly reflective monkey. That's a bit too much already. Point 0.5, that's okay. Now, um, quite often you want to have a Fresnel effect, okay? Um, that's the kind of effect when faces facing towards you, according to their normals, they are not reflective and the, f 
the greater the angle between you and the normal, uh, the, the more effective they are. And we do that by using the normal node. I showed you that before as well. So let's go with vector normal. Let's plug that in here. And you can see this is our output. It's a black and white image. Wherever there is white, uh, then um, we get one thing. Wherever it's black, we get the other thing, okay? If we connect that right now, you can see it's the wrong way around, essentially. But you cannot really see it so well, so we also have to add in a color ramp. And if we bring that closer, then you can see the difference between reflective and non-reflective is sh much sharper, or the, the border. And you can see right now, whatever faces us is reflective, whatever faces away from us is not reflective. It's, it's the way, wrong, way, wrong way around. So let's just drag that to over here and that to over there. And now we get this effect, okay? We can make it less reflective with uh, this, um, with this um, marker and more reflective with this one. Or actually it's the other way around, let me see. Yeah, it's the other way around, this one's for reflective, uh, yeah. And you can see we get this Fresnel effect as we talked about, okay? Looks pretty cool. However, um, there's one thing I didn't show you in the last tutorial, and this is actually quite cool as well. You can use the normal node um, to decide which um, normals, um, which normal vectors are used for this operation. So right now, whatever faces towards you um, is non-reflective, whatever faces away from you is more reflective. But you can also say that whatever faces towards the top is non-reflective, whatever faces away of, to the bottom or to the other side is reflective. And you can really easily play with that and you can achieve some great results. Um, and yeah, that's the first example. But as I showed, you can also use this to um, relight your scene, okay? So instead of adding the um, reflection pass, you can just add a white pass, okay? Or let's make it any color you want. You can say, I want to light my monkey with an orangish color, okay, like this. And now you can see, um, in this case, it's probably cooler if you switch those again, so that whatever, um, f whenever it's bright over here, it's actually bright on the monkey. And now you can very easily say, I want to light my monkey from, from below, from the right, from the left, from the top. And you can see you can really just very intuitively light your monkey. Of course, this doesn't really correspond with the actual lamp in the scene, so it's important to keep that in mind. And you cannot really use that very well for an animation, okay? But if you have a still image, then you have really you have full control. And also, of course, this doesn't cast any shadows. That's one thing to keep in mind as well. But you can... Yeah, you can also use that just to accentuate it a little bit to, um, yeah, to relight it just slightly. Um, yeah, it's a quite a cool effect. And if you want to make it less bright, you can just turn down that over there, and you can see then it has a, um, a more subtle effect, like this. Yeah, cool. Now this is the first node, okay, the normal node. Um, and now let's move on to the second node. And that would be the, um, well, it would basically be the vector curves. But as I said, I have no idea what this is good for. Um, let's just reestablish our previous setup here, um, like this. And this is, of course, just one way, one setup. But no matter where you drop it in, you can see over here, then this doesn't work anymore. You can drop it in, <coughs> uh, let's just, there. You can drop it over here, nothing happens. No matter what you do, no matter where you use it on, on vector noodles or on other, other sockets, I tried a whole range of setups, it never really works in the compositor. There is a way to use it quite well in the um, material nodes, but that's another story. Okay, so now let's just move that aside as well, together with this one. And we don't need that either, I guess. Okay, now the next thing is quite cool as well. Um, it is, of course, the map value, okay? And with the map value, you can map things, okay? And what you can map is, if you have an image, you usually have values between zero and one, okay? Zero being black and one being white. Um, and for example, the C pass here, which stores depth information, that doesn't go from zero to one, it goes from zero to, well, depending on your scene, to a few hundreds or whatever. And therefore, if you connect that to the camera, you can see it's just plain white, okay? Um, so we ha basically, we have to scale that down. We have to compress the whole range of, 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 um, of data to zero to one so we can actually see it. And you can, you can do that with the map value. 
or also with the normalize. I will explain the difference. Uh, you can already see we have way more options with the map value node than we have with the normalize node. But um, yeah, more than that in just a second. So now to demonstrate that, this scene is not quite ideal. So let's actually set up a second render layer. And let's just only render the first layer on the first one and on the second one, the second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, on the third one, the third, on the fourth one, the fourth, and on the fifth one, the fifth. So we can actually use five render layers. Now let's go to our 3D view. Let's select the second layer and let's just make a small composition here. Let's go to zero so we can actually see what we see from the camera. Shift C to reposition our 3D cursor. Shift A, yeah, now you can actually see what I'm typing here. Cool. Shift A and let's just add a cube. And let's just scale that down a little bit like this probably. Okay. Let's just move it a bit away from the camera. Five to go into orthographic view. Um, and let's just move that away from our camera to over here, I guess. Yep, not too bad. Scale it up a little bit, move it down a little bit. Okay, let's duplicate that to over here. Again to over here. And a third time to over, or a fourth time to over here. Like this and like this. Now it's important that if you go to wireframe view, that this cube overlaps with this cube and this cube and with those two cubes over here and over here. Okay, so we've got different um, stages of overlapping, so to say. Now let's just move that cube to the second, to the third layer, that one to the fourth, and that one to the fifth, like this. Okay. And now let's select all the layers. Okay. And let's just re-render them. Uh, is there anything we should need to take care of first? I don't think so. Okay, let's just hit F12. We can still change it. Oh, one thing, we could probably make sure that this um, lamp is on all the layers. Okay, so it illuminates everything like this. Okay, now F12. And let's see what we get. No energy. And now, this is our monkey. Um, and then we've got uh, the other render layers. Shift D. That's actually like this, like this, and like this. Okay, let's set that to one, two, three, and four. Okay, so here we've got a cube, here we've got a cube, here we've got a cube, and over here we've got a cube as well. Um, and but we we don't really care about the cubes. We care about the alpha. Okay. You can see this alpha, this alpha, this alpha, and this alpha. Move that to up there, that to up there as well. We don't need that. And let's just delete that actually. Okay, now let's assume that we want to use those alphas as a factor input to something, okay? So to do that, let's do one other thing. Let's add in a, actually an, another mix node we just deleted. <clears throat> and let's say in this mix node, we want to combine this white image, let's just create a white image, um, because right now this this has a color, but it has no kind of format, okay? So we can create a very easily a format by using another mix node, using this image or any image as the top input, and mixing white onto it with a factor of one, which means it becomes completely white. Then we can use that over here, and here we've got a, a white top input, as you can see. Now let's say we want to add red to that. I'm not there. Here we go. Red, okay? But I, I don't really want to do it this way because now we just have a completely red image. I want to add red onto this image only according to where there is something, where there is an alpha, okay? So we first have to combine all those alphas and then we have to use that as a factor input, okay? So the way you do that, for example, is you could use a mix node. Then you could just add that together with add and add that on top of that, okay? You can see, um, okay, that's the wrong input there. Here we go. You can see um, we now have the alphas of two of the render layers. Let's add in a third one, like this. And we've got three. Duplicate that again. Now that was one too much. Let's see. Let's add that in here as well. And then we're just going to use this alpha. And now we have all the four alphas together. And now if we use that as a factor input, you can see it works. Well, it works. Um, however, 
that's just because it can't display anything more red than red, okay? So if we change that color to something less red, let's say there, you can see we get issues. And that is because um, apparently this image has some issues, okay? Because otherwise it would work. And the problem is that we added those things together, okay? And when adding something, what Blender does, it just takes one image, in this case, the first one, and it adds the values of, of, of this image onto that, okay? So in this case, over, um, <clears throat> over here, it adds zero from the first image because it's black over here. All the way around. This is the first, this is the second. Okay, so it's, it takes this image, which is one over here and zero over here, and it adds that on top of that. And then um, it actually adds one from the second image onto zero from the first image over here. And here it just stays as it is because zero is added. But here where it actually overlap, it, it gets one from the first image and one from the second image and one plus one equals two, okay? Same over here. One over here because it's zero plus one. Um, but here we've got one plus one, which is two, okay? And here even worse, we get one, 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 one. Then we get two, two and two where they overlap. And here where they overlap a second time, you actually get the value of three, okay? And therefore we have a um, image with different brightness values. And therefore if we add that, if we add red onto this image according to that image over here, or if we mix it according to that, we get different settings and we do not want that, okay? Now, how would you um, make sure that doesn't happen? Okay, it's quite tricky, but that's what the map value node is for, or actually it's easiest to achieve with the map value node. Now, let me just give you a short overview of the map value node. If you, if we don't use that for now, if we just connect that to there, we now know, because I explained it, that we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 2, and 3. Those values, essentially. Now, if we drop that in there, you can see we still just see one brightness value because everything bigger than 1 is just um, clipped. It's just um, not displayed because an image cannot display anything brighter than 1, okay? Unless you have HDR images, they can store um, colors, or they can store a a bigger range so you can have more detail but that's not really important right now now you can see we have four options over here the first one is offset and when you offset that it just lifts the whole image by a certain number for example by 0.1 you can see this value is no longer zero but it's now 0.1 this one is 1.1 over here over here and over here we have 2.1 and where it was three previously we now have 3.1 okay and then you can just make it brighter and you can see as soon as we reach one uh, let me just see, it's hard to see, I think it should be when we reach 1. And this just is completely white because, um, yeah, as I said, an image cannot display anything brighter than 1. And if we lift everything by 1, of course, you can no longer see anything unless we have values below 0 previously, okay? Let's just set that back to 0. Next thing is size. And this is just a scale, okay? You can just scale the whole image down. So right now we have values from zero, from 0 to 3. If we scale that down by 10, so if we say the size is instead of 1, it's 0.1, which would be 1 divided by 10, then now this value is still 0, because 0 divided by 10 is still 0. This one is 0.1, because it's 1 divided by 10, 0.2, and 0.3, okay? Now the interesting thing is, if you change the offset by 1, okay, you might think that this, which is now 0.1, would then be 1.1, okay? But that's not the case because the offset is added basically before the size is considered. Okay, so if you go to one over here, you can see it just um, makes everything brighter than one and then it scales it down, therefore still giving you um, an actual output, not just everything plain white. Um, okay, and I can just play with that and so on. But still, um, I mean, in order to use that as the factor input here, it doesn't really work, okay? You can play with that however you want. You can set that back to one. Then you get this result, which is really red here, but then we also have a slightly uh, wrong color for the background. And even here we have different values, just that it's, yeah, just basically it's just too much red. Therefore, it still appears as one color, but there are different levels still. So we can see those additional information here. Let's just set that back to one, actually, and that one to zero. Um, you can see we have two options here, use minimum and use maximum. And with this, you can basically clip um, the range. You can say everything brighter than one is being cut off, and the same goes for everything lower than zero. 
or you can actually just change those color, uh, numbers to whatever you want. And now you can see it actually works because previously we had values brighter than one, but they are now gone and therefore we just get an even mask, okay? You can change it to whatever you want and you get, a, you get exactly what you wanted to achieve. And that's how you can use the map value node. Um, so now one other use for the map value node, which is the more obvious one, is if you want to visualize the C pass, okay? Because as I said, the C pass basically stores information about depth, okay? If you go to a camera view, then you can see, um, let's just un let's just hide the first layer, but let's also select the camera and move that to the second, third, fourth, and fifth layer. And now let's just deselect the first layer. Okay, and I can see um, this edge here is obviously closer to the camera than this edge over here, okay? And that um, information <coughs> can be used in the compositor as a black and white image. What's closer to the camera appears darker, what's further away appears brighter. Okay, quite simple. Now, if we go to the node editor, we can actually do that with the monkey now. Uh, once again over here, let's just look at the first layer. Um, this part of the cheekbone here is certainly darker than parts over here which are further away and if you go to the compositor you can see um, that this is not the case if I look at the C pass it's just plain white and that's because um, the monkey is much further away than one so okay so the first information we have is more than one therefore everything appears just white but we can now use the map value of course as before to map that down so first thing you can do you can use the size okay so let's say the monkey is further away, then we have to scale the whole thing down. Let's go to with 0.1. And you can see, we can already see our monkey. And you can also see the difference. This part is darker than this part over here, because this part is a bit closer. Um, and then you can play with that. You can go to 0 0.05, for example, then everything becomes a bit darker. Then you can also offset that. And everything becomes brighter again. Um, but once again, it doesn't have a, a lot of influence, because First, it, it, it does the offset and then it scales it down, okay? Otherwise, it would, it would already be plain white by now. And then you can also use minimum and use maximum, although this is not really necessary in this case. However, if you want to use it as a, as a factor input, okay? Then we have the same problem again. Let's just cut that. Let's just put that in there. You can see everything is basically pink, although we have a factor over there, which is weird. Let me just see why that could be. Um, oh, I connected to the wrong input. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, now it should actually work. But now we also need to use that down here because as you might remember, this has no kind of format. So we need this as the white input. So we actually get a format. And now if we, could, if we set that to point zero 0.05, you can see you can combine those colors according to this pause, and you can also see the depth is being considered and so on and so forth. Now, um, yeah, that's how the map value actually uh, works. And now if you have um, quite, let's just set that back to one, you can see it becomes blue, which is rather weird. And the higher this value is, the bluer uh, it stays blue with 0.1. You can see if you change this, you can actually get this kind of effect. And that is once again because um, we have values of above one probably over here or below zero, I'm not quite sure, uh, above one probably. And therefore it gets those weird colors that are not even specified over here. But if you change, use minimum and use maximum, then you can see it goes even weirder because now it just cuts everything off above one and therefore we get this wrong output. Okay, so yeah, we could once again play with that and get that back in range or change the offset to one actually. And yeah, you can play with that. A lot of options. Um, yeah, sometimes a bit tricky to um, to know what does what. But essentially, this just um, lifts the whole range of color of, of 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 data of values by a certain amount. This scales the whole range. Okay, this cuts it off at a certain point, and this cuts it off at a certain point um, on the other end. Okay. So yeah, let's go over there as well. Control X. Okay. But now you might ask, um, 
what does the normalize do? Because the normalize does something similar to the map value node, just that we have no kind of control. Okay, if we put that in there, you can see this is what we get. We get we automatically get this. Okay, and that is because what the map value node does, uh, what the normalize node does, it just automatically scales down the image to a reasonable. Um, size, so it, it actually fits to 0 to 1, to that range that can actually be displayed on an, on, uh, on an image, okay? And um, this is good to visualize things. For example, if you want to see what the CPAS looks like, just throw that in, you can see that's our CPAS, okay? But you, ca you cannot adjust this in any way. You have no kind of control over it whatsoever. And then you, you also, you can just use it as a factor now, you get this output, but you cannot really control that. You could of course, um, use um, an off, uh, a map value node afterwards. Let's just use our map value node afterwards, okay? Um, and now you could actually um, offset that by something, make it, in this case, brighter or make it darker. And you can see you, can, uh, you have control now with the map value node, but with, with the normalized node itself, you cannot really do a lot, okay? But you can see how the depth information is used here um, and how it looks like the, the monkey is fading into mist. And this is, you can get quite a few quite cool results. However, in my opinion, the map value node can do most of those things as well, but the normalize can also be handy sometimes. Just automatically scaling things down intelligently in a way. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is basically the normalize node. And now one thing I want to show you though is one a technique that is used sometimes by some artists. I'm not that big of a fan of that, but it's yeah, it's certainly not the worst thing. Let's just use that in there as well. You can see this is by the way our output after the map value node, or some kind of control. <clears throat> and now you know I'm sure you've heard about depth of field, which is just um, how much things get blurred when they are further away or when they're just out of focus. And there's depth of field node over here under filter. We are going to talk about those nodes, by the way, in the next tutorial. You can see we are now talking about vector, and the next thing, thing is filter. Um, and there is this defocus node. But you can also try to um, fake depth of field by using this setup. But it doesn't work so well, so let me just show you the limitations there. If we use this mix node, and if we use this image, actually not the mix node, let's just use a, a, a completely ordinary blur node. We did not yet talk about blur nodes. But um, essentially, they just blur the image. Let me just demonstrate that. If I use the image as an input here, and that's the output, then if I blur that by, let's say, 10 pixels, you can see your image gets blurred, okay? But you can also see this size input over here, and you can actually use that um, to de determine um, what part gets blurred how much. Now, if you use this output as the input there, <clears throat> you can see not everything um, is blurred equally, okay? And if we change that, you can see what's close to us is, is not blurred, and the further away it gets, the more blurred it is. <clears throat> but you can also see that it doesn't work too well. It gives you a lot of issues, and especially around the corners, it is always blurred. That's because we have this transition from gray to white, and this white actually influences the way this is blurred as well, and therefore it gives you an uneven blur. Okay, So that's not quite what you want to go for. But just uh, so you know that you can use this depth pass to blur things. And if you have um, similar uh, depth values next to each object, because it's like a, a big field or so, then you can actually use this technique to create depth of field, but the DOF node that I just showed you over here is much better to use that. But just so you know how the DOF um, basically works, okay. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that is essentially it already, let me just see. Um, yeah. So we have the normal node, which uh, enables you to use the normal information to do certain operations. We have the vector curves, about which I really don't know anything. Then we have the normalized node, or actually first the map value node, which lets you uh, map down a certain range of um, values down to another range from 0 to 1, for example, if you want to visualize it. And you can also clip things. This is very important. You can use that to... Um, Make sure your images don't have any values below zero or above one. Uh, one thing, though, is important to know here. If you want to perform this operation on a RGB image, okay, let's just do that. Let's just cut that out. Let's just add in a RGB curve, okay, to the monkey. And let's just set, put in some values for R, for G, and for B, 
Okay, so now we've got those colors. Um, and now you want to say, okay, my monkey has values above one or below zero for whatever reason, and I want to cut those off. Then you could just make sure that offset is actually zero, size is one. Use minimum is zero, use maximum is one, because now everything else gets clipped off. And if you put that in there, you can see it becomes black and white. And that's because whatever goes into the map value input, it comes out as a black and white image. So if you want to use that as on, on a colored image, it doesn't work. What you have to do then, just so you know that as well, we are going to talk about that in a, further, in a later tutorial as well, which is the converters. But if you want to use that on a RGB image, you'd have to separate the image into the different passes, okay? It doesn't matter whether you use, separate them into RGB, HSV, which is hue saturation value, or U, Y, U, V, A, or C, B, C, R, Y, C, B, C, R, whatever. Um, I'm going with RGBA. Then you can see now we, we split the image into a red channel, green channel, blue channel, and an alpha channel. And then you can rec perform operations on them and then you can recombine them, okay? So let's just duplicate that and duplicate that again. This is for the green pass, this is for the blue. And now you can just add a combine RGBA, use the blue for blue, the green for green and the red for red. Then you can see we have our previous image once again uh, over here. But now you can actually perform operations on the, the passes um, um, separately. Um, it doesn't matter if it's just black and white because those informations are stored in black and white as well. Okay. But you can also you can, for example, switch those to see what it looks like. And that gives you a different result every time. But that's a whole other thing. Okay, so I hope you were able to see how you can use those things. I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any kind of questions or comments or whatever, make sure you post them in the comments. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.